Ain't nothing better than watching you smile Whoa, 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 whoa. Ain't nothing better than watching you laugh Out loud, my baby Ain't nothing better than watching you Be you Ain't nothing better than right now In your eyes lie the secrets I don't wanna miss Put your I didn't see you there. I'm sorry. I was reading a old classic, rereading a classic I read before. Uh, it's a real page turner. I read this before on my channel before. Uh, Trade Pastor is a God. Uh, Chris Blue is the Devil by James Patterson. Definitely pick that up. Totally worth the read for me. Make sure I don't lose my place. Okay. Okay. Since you're here, uh, uh, like I do, I thought I started last week a trend on my channel. I'm gonna be reviewing two movies every Saturday, and uh, you know maybe more in the future. But for the moment, I have two two titles here. I um, actually picked up in the the uh, Black Friday sale, so uh, which you'll see that video tomorrow. But in the meantime, I looked at these two movies yesterday, and uh, let's review them. Okay, the first movie is a drama uh, starring one of my favorite actors, of, you know, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Uh, this has Jeff Daniels in it also, uh, Matthew Good, and Isla Fisher from The Wedding Crashers. Okay, it's called The Lookout. Okay, there it is right there. Uh, and it's basically um, the story of uh, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character. He's, uh, I guess his name is, uh, I'm trying to, Chris Pratt. Okay, he's a... Uh, Big-time hockey player, you know, in high school, he's projected to go to college and on a scholarship and everything else. And I think it's on prom night, I, I believe. Him, his girlfriend, and two other friends are in the back seat of a car, and they're driving down the road. Okay, and he's he has lights turned off, so you can see the action. You can see the fireflies. You know, it looks it lights up the sky. You know, I guess fireflies in mass. You know, we're in this small town that they live at. They they fly at night, and you can see them when you turn off the lights. You see them light up the sky, and he turns off the lights so they could, you know, they could see them going down the road. He's showing, he's showing off to his friends by speeding down the road, of course. So um, they get to a certain point, and then they stop to see the fireflies, and they start up again. And he doesn't turn on the lights again, and so they're, they're speeding down the road. And of course, yeah, you, know, you know, his friends are getting a little worried. They said, oh, "Listen, turn on the lights," you know, and you know they really implore him to do it. So he, he gets ready. To, Turn on the lights. He turns on the lights. Actually, the headlights for his car. And at the last minute, you know, as soon as he turns them on, they're right in front of this uh, tractor that pulled over a combine. Excuse me, combine machine that I guess got a flat or whatever, and it kind of got, it's right in the middle of the road. And of course, they crash into it, and they don't show you the results of that. You know what happened until you know they did pick up the story months later. Well, not months later. I think it's uh, maybe a year later or so. And you know, you know, he's telling the story. Chris Pratt, uh, it's Chris Pratt, right? Yeah, Chris Pratt, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character. You see the results of the accident. You you hear, you basically find out that his two friends in the backseat of the car they died. Uh, the girl, his girlfriend, that was in the front seat with him. She, uh, I think, I think they t say that she lost a, she lost her leg, but he, had lost his, he lost. Uh, I'm trying to think what the condition what they called it. Uh, he has memory problems. Like he has to write down everything he does. Like he, he, he has a little notebook that he writes. He writes down because I guess his memory is, is totally. I forgot. There's a term that they said I just can't remember. But anyway, um, well, he has to write down everything from the time he wakes up to you know wake up. He literally writes it down. Wake up, take a shower with soap, prepare the coffee, drink coffee, eat breakfast. Take the keys, drive to work. You know, he, he literally has to write down everything he does because he, he, I think he has no short term. Is it short term memory? Somebody can direct me on that. But he, he can't remember things. He has and he has um, problems with you know with impulse control. Like he'll say exactly what he means, even though that's not what he means to say in his head. So he's having these problems, and he's go and he goes to the center where they're trying to teach him how to, you know, how to, I guess how to gain some kind of control on it. And he lives with uh, 
a blind gentleman, uh, played by Jeff Daniels, right here, uh, who's uh, like a telemarketer, okay, and they're, they're living together, and he, you know, he's blind, Jeff Daniels' character, and he's trying to, and he's a friend, and in the meantime, he also, um, uh, excuse me, Chris Pratt, you know, Joseph gordon levitts character, who works at a bank at night, he basically, uh, he cleans up at, at night at the bank, and he's like, yeah, he basically cleans up at night. He's like the only one there at the bank, okay? And so you get the title from Lookout because uh, Catherine Matthew Good right here kind of befriends him in a bar. He it was a couple of years older than him. He tells him he remembers him, how he was a big-time hockey player and everything, and he buys him a beer and stuff, and he you know gets to know him a little bit better. And basically he has this, uh, he hires this, uh, I'm going to say, prostitute, for lack of a better word, uh, Esla Fisher, to get next to him, you know, to, she starts hanging out with him, and then she, of course, she sleeps with him, <laughs> and, of course, then Matthew Good brings up the point about, he, you know, he's telling about how these banks are uh, shitting all over the farmers and stuff, and he kind of, like, goads uh, Joseph Gordon, the bits character, to, uh, that, you know, saying that they're going to rob a bank, they're going to rob the bank, you know, this, and basically... He goes along with it because he's telling them he's basically talking him into it by you know by appealing to him by you know, like I said giving him the girl you know telling him all these great things about himself and how his family doesn't appreciate him and how nobody really appreciates him but you know once he has the money he has the power and once you have the money you have the power okay and this is a really really good movie uh, there comes a couple of twists and turns in it you know that you see in this movie um, and like I said the acting is top notch. Uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt is great. Uh, Jeff Daniels is his usual great self, and Matthew Good is appropriately sleazy <laughs> as the uh, you know the the mastermind of this bank robbery. And like I said, it has a little bit of violence in it, okay. But it's it's a real good story about a guy who's trying to basically trying to function and live in the world. Because you see, uh, you know, Joseph Gordon Levitt, he's he even uh, he cleans up at the bank at night, but he's also trying. You know, he has a, a teller, a female bank teller that likes him and she's trying to help him because he wants to instead of cleaning up and he wants to actually work in the he wants to be a bank teller he wants to do that you know he even practices with fake money and stuff to try to better himself you know it's, it, it comes it gets hard for him you know he has to take his medicine and everything else and he, he can't remember things and but he's trying to you know to better himself and also Jeff Daniels character you know they're he's trying to open up a restaurant and he also also wants Joseph Gordon Levitt character to work with him, of course. And then they have this big, you know, confrontation where they go to uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt's parents' house, and of course his parents are basically treating him like a baby, and they won't trust him to do anything. And he's and that's part of the reason why Matthew, when Matthew Good comes along, he's able to appeal to uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt because he everything he said that his father doesn't trust him, everything actually turns out to be right, and he kind of appeals to him. Uh, and that kind of appeals to him that he gets if he gets the money he gets the power and then he can do what he wants. He doesn't have to be restricted to working as a janitor in a bank at night. Okay, and it's, like I said, it's a really really good drama with great performances by the lead actors. Very underrated movie. I had this movie on DVD uh, years ago. I got it because I like Joseph Gordon Levitt, but I never watched it. And then I saw this, you know, at the Best Buy for three ninety nine, of course, for the Black Friday sale. So I definitely picked it up. Definitely worth looking. The Lookout. Good movie. Joseph Gordon Levitt is just a great actor. And like I say, great support from Jeff Daniels and Matthew Good right there. He's, I believe he's English because I, I've seen him in other movies and I know he's British. Uh, but really good. And of course, Ashley Fisher, she's in it for a little bit. Like I said, she's like the honey trap, if you, you know, that, you know, kind of lures, you know, that lure, that Matthew Good uses to lure Jeff, Joseph Gordon Levitt's character in. Okay. Just a really, really good movie. Definitely worth getting. A very underrated movie. Because I haven't heard too many people talking about this movie. Like I said, I got it originally because I like Joseph Gordon Levitt, and the premise sounded good. And I think I saw a trailer for it once. And then I, like I said, I bought the DVD, but I never watched it. And then I saw the Blu-ray, and I actually watched it the other day. Very, very good. Now this next movie is a comedy uh, starring you know Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jingle All the Way, Family Fun Edition. Okay. Um, this has special features. This has extended director's cut, making of a hero feature, Super Kids feature. Turbo Man, Behind the Mask featurette, which I haven't watched at Special Features. I watched the theatrical cut yesterday, and uh, this movie stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course, as a workaholic father who's 
never there for his little son, right there, played by Jake Lloyd. The uh, well, I didn't remember, and then I thought about it. I was reading about the movie. Yeah, this is the little kid from you know from the first uh, Star Wars movie, the, you know, the Episode One. You know, the little young Anakin Skywalker, Jake Lloyd. Anyway, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is a workaholic father. You know, he's never there for a son. He misses his son, all his son's important events and stuff, and. He, you know, he tries to cheer his son up. His son says he wants the Turbo Man action figure, which is a, like a this must-see toy that every kid wants. And of course, and his wife reminds him that he was supposed to get it, that she reminded him two weeks ago that he was supposed to get it, pick it up. And of course, he assures his wife that he did, but of course he didn't. So of course, he goes out on Christmas Eve trying to uh, get it. And of course, mayhem ensues because, you know, all the crazy people out there. And one of the crazy people he meets is Sinbad, who plays a, a crazy postal worker. Okay, well, I know you can see Sinbad right there. He's at the bottom there. But anyway, one of the people that he meets is, uh, you know, Sinbad, who plays a crazy mailman. And wackiness ensues. This movie's okay. Um, I heard things about it. Everybody said, oh, you got to see Jingle All the Way. It's a great movie, great movie. I don't think it's great. In fact, I think the little kid, <laughs> Jake Lloyd, uh, was was really annoying. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger wasn't the best dad at all. He was too much of a workaholic. But <laughs> this little kid was a brat, okay? Uh, I don't know. That's not PC to say that, but his little kid was a brat, okay? I mean, you know, how do you think you, you live in a nice house and you get the nice things you have because your father's a workaholic, even though he's, he should have, the father should have paid more attention, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger's character should have paid more attention to his son's needs and everything else, but I think the son was a little bit of a brat, just a little bit of a brat, okay? Okay, he whined a little bit too much, okay? Uh, the, there's a lot of physical comedy, there's a lot of slapstick comedy, a lot of people, Arnold Schwarzenegger getting, you know, Knocked over and fighting up. I think the best part to me was the was the part where he um, when Arnold Schwarzenegger went with Jim Belushi, who plays like a a low life Santa. Him and his elf they they go to his, to his workshop to pick up one of these action figures. And of course, he's trying to sell Arnold Schwarzenegger a bogus uh, Turbo Man action figure. And then there's like a like a miniature fight. I think that was the best part of the movie. That and I guess the part at the end where Turbo Man's flying around and stuff. I won't say exactly. What Turbo Man is flying around, but I mean, it's not as great. The, 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 my favorite Christmas movie of all time is The Christmas Story. That to me is like, just a classic. Everything about that movie is just perfect. I love The Christmas Story. This one, The Christmas Story, would be a ten. This I would give a, I would give a five to. I mean, and maybe six if I'm being generous. Okay. I mean, little kid. I mean, he had a, a gripe because his father wasn't there for his important events, but he still came off as extra whiny to me. So. Uh, but, and like I said, in the physical humor, a lot of the physical humor in it was funny. And like I said, and Sinbad was crazy. He kind of carried the movie to me with the physical car. Him and in the second half, him, and I think Robert Conrad plays a cop too in here who, who, was, who was involved in a lot of scenes, and he was good. I mean, he was really good too. Okay, and also, uh, who else is in this? I kind of remember. Uh, the late uh, Phil Hartman is in this. He plays a nice sleazy neighbor who's always hitting on the neighborhood women, and he's appropriately sleazy, so... Phil Hartman did a great job, who I absolutely love. It's a shame what happened to him, but uh, it's, it's okay. Like I said, if you want to write it, okay, you can write it for a Christmas movie. I get, like I said, I give it a five, maybe six. It's not a ten, like I said. Christmas Story is a ten. Home Alone, the first Home Alone movie, is like a ten or a nine. Okay, but Jingle All the Way is okay if you want to watch a, you know, like I said, uh, it, it's okay. Like it's a little kid, a bit of a brat, but. I give it credit, and I like, like I said, I like the the end scene where you have Turbo Man flying around and stuff and doing his thing. I like that, and I like the beginning part where they show the, the uh, I guess the uh, the TV show about where he's well, that's a TV show. I guess yeah, I guess it was a TV show about Turbo Man when he's flying around doing his stunts and stuff. That looked pretty cool, okay. But a lot of stuff in between of it, in between it was a lot of slastic humor and stuff, and a lot of Arnold's physical comedy where Arnold getting beat up left and right trying to get this toy and stuff and crazy reindeer. Renegade Raid it, and people have seen it and will know what I'm talking about. Okay, so there you go. So those are the two movies that I um, uh, picked up uh, for my Black Friday, part of my Black Friday sale, and the two movies I reviewed. Again, The Lookout, definitely recommend this movie. I, I would give it a, a definitely a, an 8, a solid 8, a solid 8. Definitely, because uh, definitely an 8. Okay, and this, uh, Jingle All the Way, a 5. Okay. I was saying six to be generous, but I'm going to give it a five, a good five. Like I said, it's 
entertaining, you know, but not the greatest Christmas movie of all time. Again, Christmas Story is the greatest Christmas movie of all time. Okay, so um, let me go back to reading my uh, classic book again, Trey Passes God, Chris Blue is the Devil by James Patterson. Pick it up at a store near you. And <clears throat> let me go back to uh, listening to my beautiful music and reading my book. Okay, it's Trey Passes saying so long and take care. Thank <laughs> you.